market update. Um, my name is Keith Blanchard. We have Giovanni Cavalletto today giving our uh, California avocado market update. Um, we are recording this meeting. I think you, you should have just gotten notice. Uh, standard Zoom uh, procedures with um, a chat function at the bottom of the screen to um, ask any questions. You can raise your hand, uh, type through the chat, or um, we should be able to unmute your microphone and ask uh, questions during an appropriate time during Giovanni's um, update. So with that, I, I appreciate you for taking the time to join us this morning. And uh, it is a couple minutes after our start time. So we can go ahead and begin with our California avocado update. Okay, thank you, Keith, for that uh, nice introduction. And thank you everybody for uh, joining us on this day. There is a lot going on in the market um this week and we thought it was a, a a good time to reconvene and do this monthly zoom update that we started gosh it, it's got to be started pretty close to a year ago um that we've been doing these monthly zoom updates for california growers to talk about the avocado market and they've really become a a uh, an important part of our outreach to the field in addition to what everybody on Keith's team, uh, Giuseppe Bailey, Jose Mauricio, uh, Lisa and, and Gerardo are doing out there live in the field. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the California, California harvest, we are just past the 190 million pound mark as of last week. We were 72% done versus the total estimate. I suspect by the end of this week, by today, we're all of 75% done. So we're in the last quarter of the, of the California harvest. Uh, that would leave roughly, if we think that there's about eight weeks left between now and September 15th or so, that would be about... Um, 9 million pounds per week for the next eight weeks, if it were to go steady. We know it's probably going to um, tail off there the last few weeks. Uh, last week was a smaller week. It was just over, just over 6 million pounds came in. Part of that was due to the um, 4th of July holiday for the, for the low uh, bin count last week. Uh, staying within California, we've got the lamb house release dates are coming up. So I, we would encourage anybody that's got the lamb house. I know that the field team has been out there kind of beating the bushes, putting together a uh, marketing plan with the growers to emulate what we did so successfully during the GEM program where we, we were able to put together uh, the gems into a coordinated effort that had a steady delivery of bins over about a five or six week period. And we were working to do something similar with the lamb house. So we've got the size 48 release date coming up on the 19th or was on the 19th of uh, June. We had the 60 release date on, on the 3rd of July and we've got the 70 release date on the 17th of July. Um, it's gonna be interesting how that, how that uh, comes in with, because Mexico is in its transition uh, right now between the old crop and the new crop. Originally, as I, as, as I spoke on the last couple of, of these meetings, I thought July was gonna be a terribly crowded market because we were gonna have as many as seven different options of avocados. We, we the, the biggest sources being California Hass, California Lamb Hass, Mexican Old Crop, Mexican Flor Loca, and Peru. And then of course to that, we add uh, a little bit coming out of Florida and some other uh, 
places as well. So I thought originally that July was going to be a very crowded, very difficult market. And then things changed starting about 10 days ago. So as we know, July is the period of transition from old crop to new crop out of Mexico. They've had a record crop that they're finishing now. And there's been no shortage of that. You know, they were doing, even as recently as two or three or weeks ago, they were doing 1,100 loads per week. Um, just continue to pump out the old crop like it was never going to end. Over the last two weeks, they've reduced that down to about 800 loads per week. And that's made a difference in the market, a significant difference in the market. Uh, at first, I thought maybe it was psychological because 60 or 70 percent of the avocado companies in the United States only deal with Mexican avocados. They don't deal with California. And so though that 60 or 70 percent of the companies knew that their supply was reduced from 1100 loads to 800 loads, I thought that would maybe cause a little bit of a psychological, perception of scarcity rather than a real per, real scarcity of avocados. But nevertheless, what's happened over the last 10 days or so, the aggregate volume of avocados in the United States has reduced um, by somewhere between 15 and 20%. It went from the low 60 million pound range to the low 50 million pound range um, over the last 10 days or so. And that is starting to have an effect on, on pricing that you, you've you been seeing in the fresh facts. You've been hearing from your field reps. And I believe that we will continue to hear that um, going into the summer. I knew that there was going to be a gap. I've talked about that a little bit with, uh, with, with uh, our team and some of the growers. I thought there was going to be a gap somewhere in starting around the middle to end of August and extending into September that as California and Peru exited the market, that Mexico, who has a smaller floor loca crop this year, was going to struggle to fill that gap. Um, and we're seeing it, but I thought that July was going to be a crowded market and we're starting to see that transition happen about three weeks earlier than I had anticipated it, which is which is good news for the California growers that that uh, still have fruit left. Um, another change that's going to happen is that as Mexico gets into the as the as the floor loca overtakes the old crop over the next three weeks as the principal source coming out of Mexico, the size curve is going to change drastically. So over the last month, uh, we it, it's all been uh, old crop. Even this week, it was over 90%, maybe 85% old crop versus only 15% floor loca in this week's crossing. The old crop, when they were doing 1,100 loads per week uh, three weeks ago, was was causing an oversupply of large fruit. Uh, so the fruit, the old crop's been on the trees for 14 or 15 or 16 months. It continues to grow. And just like in the olden days in California, when you would have larger fruit um, at the end of the season, Mexico had larger fruit at the end of the season. So there was a oversupply of Mexican large fruit, undersupply of small fruit three weeks ago. Three weeks from now, there's going to be an undersupply of large fruit coming out of Mexico, which hopefully can open some uh, windows up for the lamb house that's going to be coming in. And I'm not sure when, but at some point, because the floor loca is smaller, it's only been on the tree for five or six months. They just have it's going to have a much smaller size curve. So that's going to be a big change that we see um, over the uh, over the next three weeks or so. Um, 
other countries of origin. So California, we talked about California's 75% done. Peru, believe it or not, is they're about 50% into their crop on shipping. That's on departures from, uh, from Peru to the rest of the world. <coughs> That's the arrivals of that are delayed um, by about three weeks, but we are uh, they're on the downward part of their crop on the on the shipping side. Right now, uh, the European market is probably, for now in the next few weeks, going to be at its at its low point in the six to seven euros per four kilo box. Uh, that's going to cause a temptation uh, for Peru to try to ship a little bit more fruit up here, hoping that they can take advantage of that transition to the floor loca out of Mexico, but it's not necessarily a one-for-one -one exchange between a scarcity of Mexican fruit and an acceptance of the Peruvian fruit. Um, and then we'll see uh, Chile. It sounds like they've got a larger crop for this year. I don't anticipate that we'll see any Chilean arrivals before October. Um, and even in October, I think they're going to be uh, relatively limited. Um, the bin count, as we've been talking about on these Zooms, continues to pivot toward the north. Uh, yesterday, there were uh, <clears throat> a total of about uh, 1,600 bins harvested, of which all, less than 300 were coming out of the south. So we're seeing a an, uh, finishing up of the harvest in Escondido, Fabric, and Temecula, and the vast majority of the harvest continuing to come out of the northern growing districts of Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo counties. The, so the, the main takeaway that I would like to get out, have, have out of this call is that this is our first real up market that we've had in a year and a half. This is, and it looks like it's going to be sustained. You know, during the, the COVID period, we had a decline in demand. We had an, a, an oversupply situation with a record crop out of Mexico. And so, so starting in March of 2020 through about June, it's, it's been a tough market. Um, in the United States. This is the first real sustained up market that uh, we've had in a long time. And it looks like it's gonna remain sustained for the foreseeable future, at least for through the end of the California uh, crop. And so we would encourage everybody to coordinate as closely as possible with the, with the field team on what your harvest plans uh, may be continue to watch the weather forecast because we're bound to have some more heat, heat events coming through to make sure that we can get in front of those heat events in terms of irrigation. Uh, and it looks like we're gonna have a strong fourth quarter to the, to the California avocado season. A couple of things I would also like to highlight uh, is that we are back to our live help. So uh, that's both with Lisa on the food safety side. And I've, we've heard great feedback from the grower base about her uh, helping on coordination with the gap audits. And I'd like to thank Lisa for those efforts. And we're also very excited to welcome Gerardo Aldonate back with our cultural visits to the field. Um, so Gerardo has been here for about Two weeks now, he is coordinating with the field team to do live visits for the consulting at the Grove level. And so if you if you haven't set that up yet, please contact your field rep to help uh, get onto the list. Um, so I don't know if there's any, if, if Keith, if we would like to take any questions. I am uh, monitoring the chat and I don't see any typed in questions yet. Um, you could feel free to unmute and ask any questions live if anybody was to have any. Um, 
but it's it's good to be seeing the tail end of this season uh, ending on a very strong note, Giovanni. So thank you for the update. Um, we have a question uh, from Ivor. How long do you see the California market uh, going for, Giovanni? I think it'll be wrapped up um, for all intents and purposes, Ivor, by the middle of September. You know, it's a it's a small crop, and and with the drought conditions in California, I don't see. I don't see it really extending past that. You know, last year with the with the wheat crop in the fall and the and the on crop last year, there were some growers that they kept California kept harvesting through December, and the market never really uh, rewarded anybody for that. It, it actually continued to erode through October into November and into December. Uh, this year with the smaller crop and the and now with the rising market, I think we're going to be done for all intents and purposes um, by the middle of September. And, and also it's important as uh, I think Giuseppe has done a really good job with the uh, in, in, over the last 10 years in in finishing up with the critical mass because is again, that's important that we can get a California premium. And this year, I think the efforts that the California Avocado Commission and the index sales team have put together, we've had the largest premium for California avocados versus the imported avocados that I've ever seen in my life. I think that's gonna to start to narrow a little bit now that the Mexican market is starting to heat up, but it's been as wide as 10 or $12 for a good, portion of the season and that's not that's not by accident that's got a lot of support from a lot of people both on the index sales team and and from the california avocado commission driving that um driving that demand but it's important that we finish up it, customers are willing to pay that premium as long as there's consistency in supply what what giuseppe's done a really good job at is in um, avoiding gaps. So they'll, they'll pay that premium with consistency, but as we get to the end, the stragglers come in. If we, if we run out of fruit and then one or two weeks later, a few more bins come in, it's harder to go back to that premium, right? Customers will still take it, of course, but it'll be harder to justify that premium. So that's where coordination with the field team and finishing up the California, uh, harvest with critical mass on kind of a defined end date is important to try to avoid the problems and pitfalls that can come in with uh, straggling in uh, fruit that's whose harvest is somewhat orphaned from the rest of the season. Okay, thank you, Giovanni. Um, I don't see any other questions now. Um, uh, just to reiterate, we, we are uh, planning our 25th seminar that we are intending to do live in the, in the three different growing regions of uh, the South area of Fallbrook and Temecula, do a um, uh, Ventura stop and then a far north in San Luis Obispo. Again, this is our 25th uh, seminar, so we are trying to make it a, a, a special event and, and highlight the, um, the um, uh, efforts we've done and, and kind of show the grower appreciation on, on that um, education outreach that we like to do. So look forward to an uh, invitation coming soon to you. Should be sometime in mid-September that we're able to get that put together and um, get out there and look forward to seeing everybody live. Um, one other um, message that uh, came in, um, I need to put on my glasses to get to this one. Um, five,
Uh, John Cornell saw an impressive display at a local Costco. Westphalia five pack avocados from Peru. Could index do this, but change the avocados from California. We're already doing that, Mr. Cornell. Um, I'm sure you've seen a um, index display, but we are double stickering California fruit, highlighting the California brand and um, continue, continue the effort. So thanks for the information, John, um, but index continues to support the California grower and brand. Yeah, I'm, I'm particularly proud of the box that we use with the big uh, map of California on it with uh, with kind of a coastal uh, grove in the on, on the label. So it's and that's something we always look forward to every year during the California season is rolling out the California carton and rolling out the the double stickering. And it's something that that really uh, uh, invigorates the whole the whole field team and the sales team as well. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you for your questions. And uh, thank you for the growers to take your time on joining us today. Um, look forward to seeing you live here in September and we'll let you get on with your day. So thank you for, for joining us. Thanks everybody.